started in modeling and I'm actually surprising myself by recording this video because uh, it just wasn't on the list but the way uh, I want to say the way God works right <laughs> um, so my sis I was telling my sister about the, my video ideas for YouTube and as I was telling her, she goes, I feel like you're missing a very important one. And she said, how I got started modeling. I don't know why I feel inadequate to answer this. And I don't know if that's because, well, I'm still not where I want to be in modeling. But I feel like if I had this information that I'm about to tell you guys, it would have helped me so much. Um, so let's drop some gems, let's spill some tea. So I have my notes here, okay. Um, I knew from when Top Model was airing it, when I was watching it on the CW, UPN, whatever you guys remember, I knew I wanted to model just from like really young. I remember praying to God that when, you know, at the end of the Top Model episodes, they would be like, uh, you at least have to be 5'7 to submit. I remember praying like, Lord, please make me at least, at least 5'8. And yeah, it ended up being like 5'8 and three quarters, 5'9. You know, however you want to slice it. <laughs> um, so I knew just from then that I wanted to model. I remember like uh, being a part of this Tommy Girl audition when I was younger and it was in New York this is when I still lived in New York and it was just like this open cast call I remember my mom and my auntie Val hey y'all I remember they took me to this thing and it was you know your general cattle call I don't know how far I went with it but I remember that being the very start of it all so fast forward to Virginia Tech I um, came into a friend, she was like 5'10", and she's, you know, beautiful, and she also had the desire to model. We naturally clicked up really well, her name's Megan, and here is where it all started. She was like, hey, princess, you know, there's this agency, Wilhelmina, in Richmond, and you know they I'm I'm going to their open call immediately immediately following that conversation I googled all of that information blase blase I found it I ended up going to an open call I ended up getting an offer to be signed but that wasn't the beginning um I don't know any new models know like say for example you get signed or you don't get signed it's not the end-all be-all meaning you aren't going to get into an agency and get work nine times out of ten there are rare cases where people do get into an agency and work their butts off I have a friend of mine who's doing that right now she's like booked all the way out but um in my experience that hasn't been the case so say you get an agency or you don't get an agency it is a okay your best move will be what i did co-currently which was i like had friends in the art department who had cameras and we would do photo shoots so i would like post my pictures here or here whatever so I'm gonna post my picture so you can see so here is where I did my photo shoot with one of my friends Rakeem his Instagram I think is Rock Nation whatever I don't really know 
But like, I just shoot here with him and it was really cool. So I was like, oh, I'm doing it. Then following that, um, there was a makeup artist at my school who was starting out to do makeup and she was like, princess, can you be my model? Can you be my face for me to do your makeup? And I did this. At the very same time, I did my first test shoots with uh, Modelogic Wilhelmina. That was the name. So getting an agency, you can only have one agency per region. And that one's like in the Virginia region. So over here is where I did my first test shoot with them. And yeah, that was really cool. Actually, you'll see this bag in that test shoot. And um, it was fun. It was just the start of it. I can't say I loved the pictures. Um, because I felt, I didn't feel like myself exactly. I didn't feel that marketable. Yes, my hair is straight in both images, but just the creative control that I had in doing it myself versus, you know, going through an agency, but they know exactly what their clients want. So it's in your best interest to trust your agency, but it's also in your best interest to find an agency who is going to believe in you. Like that will be the difference that will make or break you. That will save you so much time. That will give you the motivation to keep going. Just so many things when you have an agency who believes in you, okay? So at the same time I was doing these two things, I didn't book a thing. Okay, back in 2012 is when I first got signed to them. I'm looking at my notes to see. I did my first test in June, on June 3rd, 2012. Well, that's when I got my images. So roughly around that time. But at the same time, I was doing like stuff on campus. So I was doing the runway shows just for the experience. I was which I was doing the runway shows through the fashion department. I was networking with the kids in the art department who had cameras. I was um, reaching out to designers on campus um, who's like started their own company. Um, D Domenico is one that I really worked with. If you guys hear background on this Halo or upstairs, whatever. So I was, uh, D Domenico was one person that I ended up doing e-commerce with, um, just on this side of networking. So, and then I ended up uh, reaching out to local wedding boutiques, uh, local bridal boutiques. So when they did their fashion shows to like get brides to be a part of the thing, I was, um, I was one of their models and those were like paid so that was cool on this side i didn't book my first job which i got paid it was like great <laughs> but i love i love i love this job when i feel like it's there's a payoff there's a reward because like so much of this side i've had to do like on my own which is cool because i want to there's a drive you know work ethic faith without works is dead period so like you have to you know do it on your own on this side it's like the whole waiting game and etc but i love what i do when there's a payoff when there's a reward when there is like <sighs> when i don't have to do it all on my own and but rarely that'll happen in this industry so like if you really want to do it like for me from my experience you have to want to do it make time to do it network and do it that's it so on this side i didn't book my first job until i didn't book my first paying job until june 2013. so i signed with the agency model logic and a year later, so I signed with the agency, um, Model Logic, in June, June 3rd, 2012. And I didn't get my first paid job until June 12, 2013. And my friend Megan, she told me about them in, when did she tell me? 
September 2011. So like the time, the waiting game on this end is just really rough. And this was all before like Instagram, social media and stuff like that, which really uh, catapulted models really far. So this was before all of that. And it's just like, okay, cool. Now, after that, let me see. I had another job is when I worked with Bush Gardens. So that first job that I got in June, 2013, it was just like a pool party. It was really cool. I met some cool people. And every time you guys get a job, it's important to be nice, to be friendly, to be happy to be there. And I sounded really country, to be nice, <laughs> kind, and important. All right. Anyway, it's important to be nice because, like, that in itself makes you more attractive. So you're going to attract people. So that was before, like, Instagram and everything. So it wasn't any makeup artists, uh, creative directors, directors that I could really, un like, network with outside of my agency um but the models were who i was able to stay in touch with and that kind of helped like you get a feel for you know how everyone else is doing and that kind of helps your mind as far as like am i being shelved am i being forgotten and shelved is when you are like your agency has you signed but you know they have you signed so that only they can have you but they aren't like pushing you for jobs that's what it called what it's called to be shelved and you can be shelved because like you know you're in a contract you can't be signed with another agency in that region so i told you that guys i told you guys that earlier and yeah so i still keep in touch with one of the models regularly through social media her name is jazzy um mix bombshell is her instagram handle and i think i met her at the bush gardens one so it wasn't my first uh intellos commercial it was the bush gardens campaign that we did just having a taste for that the feel for that it was just like it was like yes i can do this right around that time i asked to be released from that agency which um and like at times i regret but i had an opportunity from a and tm to be signed with them in 2013 and they told me i couldn't be signed with another agency uh i didn't get it obviously but you know there's that and then there was a long gap of me not booking jobs so it was like I just didn't feel like I was losing entirely, nor did they fight to keep me. But things that I would have done differently is I would have studied the market. I would study girls who look like me and I would have tried to, girls who look like me that are doing well. And I would have tried to emulate that look as best as possible and while also making it best fitting to me so that i can get like the signature look so you guys can see like my hair is straight in my test images so i had to go on set with my hair straight because that's how they saw it in my book but at the time curly hair was more marketable and i had natural hair so it wasn't convenient for me to straighten my hair um all the time even just for casting and my agency did it they saw my hair curly when I was going to do my test shoot. But because like when you take it out, natural hair, when she was like, can you take your hair out? I was like, yeah, of course I took it out. But it's like natural hair, like when you put it in position, it's gonna stay in position. So it wasn't like take it out, shake it and boom, it's a curly fro. It was just like womp womp in that same position. So things that I would do different was study other girls who look like me. Um, I would have like reached out to my agency more, asked them other ways that I can test, and then also like just kind of put myself in the forefront of their mind because I feel like there was a point where I just kind of was shelved and got for you know forgotten, and that's not anything on Model Logic. I think they're they are a great um, agency, so I'm not about bad mouthing them at all. I think it's like it's a dual relationship so 
you know, they have whole lists of models on their hand that they have to deal with while you know you're only thinking about you. So if I did more stuff on my end back then, even every time I test shoot it on this end, sent them images for them to pick, then I would have had a bigger book. If that doesn't make sense, ask me in the comments below. Moving on. Um, for a long period, so two years, I was only doing local stuff on my own. Then I spoke with, okay, so I went to the academy. My One of my friends, Stefan Atri One of my friends, Stefan Atris, has a brother named Ryan Atris. Ryan was working as a model back then. I remember having a conversation with him on the phone one day. He was like, yeah, blah, blah, let's talk. Let me show, let me give you guys my little relic here. All right, so this is August 12, 2015. I had a conversation with Ryan, which you guys, Stephanie's brother, he dropped gems on me that day like i don't know if he knows how much he blessed me in that conversation but like he helped give me guidance moving back to atlanta because it was like i didn't have any direction on where to go and the benefit to stefan's brother was that they're both from Atlanta. So he knew photographers. He knew who to work with, which, you know, who? He knew who. And he told me all the who as much as he could. Anyways, and whatever he told me, helped me. So I remember talking to him and you guys, he told me about Chris, Ron Hill, Carlos Jones, um, Elvis, Pedra, Panda, ooh, I still want to work with him. And I think Kenneth Hines, was, he didn't tell me about Kenneth, but Kenneth went to my high school and ended up becoming a photographer. Um, he told me about, like, just flying to Miami for a $100 flight. He told me about, like, how to, like, just take photographers out. Like, when you're trying to pick your photographers, he was like, take them out to lunch so that you guys can see if you click and you know going further then you can book them like he he told me so much information guys i'm gonna tell y'all right now <clears throat> so let's see first thing he says be in shape um be in shape for what you feel like your call is so for me i'm an athletic fitness model so i have to be an athletic fit build i'm not my just my structure in general is not too small to be like you know high fashion or whatever so dang these lashes trying me all right so he said be in shape he saw my build he said get some fitness shots get some gear you know like you know the jackets um like fitness ball or whatever do a fitness shoot Oh yeah, mention how you got that photographer's information. So for example, if I'm reaching out to Chris, say, hey Chris, um, I spoke to Ryan, he talked so much about you, he was telling me that blah, blah, blah. So it lets the photographer know where you're coming from, that you're referred, that he was referred, and that you guys can make a beautiful, trusted relationship. Um, he was telling me about different rates on photographer, which is really important, but things have changed since then. So I'm not gonna give you guys rates, um, but do what you can in your budget and ask them to work with you. Cause nine times out of 10, they want the money. They already have the equipment. And like, I'm not saying like sell a photographer short because uh, the right photographer can make you look so good. And the wrong photographer, will make you look so bad. And trust me, I've shot with both and you don't want that wrong photographer. So don't be cheap. Just try to communicate. And there's a difference in that. Make sure you communicate with a photographer. Second, the whatever number thing 
he was telling me is that you need to look at a photographer's work and have an idea of what you want to do and see if those things blend together. There's Instagram now. Hang on, you guys. I'm going to turn off the... Close my blind. There's Instagram now, so you can look and see a photographer's portfolio on, on Instagram quickly, handy, on your phone. You can look at that. You can see if that's on brand with what you want to do. And if it is, and their style of photography is what you're looking for, reach out to them. Don't just reach out to anybody. And this is why I don't always work with everybody, especially at this point in my career. Um... Yes, it's good to network, but who you network with, I mean, sometimes you don't want to waste your time. Let me just put it like that. Like, I'm so over wasting my time. Like, half the time I don't bother. Unless somebody's, like, really adamant or passionate about working with me and God puts it on my heart or, like, God still allows me to somehow be working with that person, then it's like, okay, by all means, I'm here. But if you're going to waste your time, you guys and waste your money it's not worth it and like wasting your money you can get your money back but wasting your time we can't ever get that back and that's another reason why i'm dropping that video this video is because if i had half of the tools i'm telling you guys like which it would have it would have saved me so much time period so um the questions that you're going to ask your photographer, Ryan also told me this. He said, how many, he said, make sure you ask your photographer, but now they have packages on their website. Things are a lot more convenient, but make sure you ask how many images will I get? And if you're networking with a photographer, say that their package is, their lowest package is maybe 375. And they offer you one or two images. Say, hey, how much for an extra edit or how, um, how much for another look or can you work with me since we're all since I'm already gonna be with you to do another look is there anything that you can do for me that's another way that you can kind of talk with your photographer to get something happening and like I said you guys go to lunch bond with them kind of have your questions ready or you can ask before and then go to lunch whatever you want to do however you want to slice it but for women it is so important for us to kind of know our photographers ahead of time get a feel for them because we're in a compromised state when we have to change our clothes like we like there are stories there are blacklists you know there's poop model management that's really not the name but i don't curse and um who tells you who and who went not to work with but also everybody's not on there so if you can get a feel for yourself listen to your intuition bring somebody along with you who also have a great discernment, you know, that will help you tremendously. But like as a woman, you guys, it's so important that you talk with them and see you, you just never know. And that's why I'm saying that. So questions that you want to ask them is how many images will I get for our shoot? Uh, will they be edited and ready in time for my portfolio? Like what's the editing time? Like what's the return time? How many looks will I be able to get on set? Um, like one look is just one outfit. That's what you call a look or makeup change, one outfit. Um, will hair and makeup be provided? Usually it's not. You're gonna have to find you a makeup artist or a hairstylist. Uh, but as you grow in your career, you're gonna be able to do those things yourself. You guys, I kid you not. Jobs I got paid for, jobs I didn't get paid for, I've had to do my own makeup. I have to do my own hair. It happens like, um, so if that's something that you can start learning now, I think that you should. Um, there's YouTube University. YouTube U University is going to teach you about your makeup, you know, your face shape, figuring that out. Your eye, you know, if you have like hooded or whatever, how to properly showcase that. Um, YouTube University is going to teach you how to do your hair, you know, and, you know, for your hair type. There's, it's also important that you get in good graces with the photographer, or make, uh, 
It's also important that you get in good graces with a hairstylist that you know you've gone with, that you trust with your hair, and you ask them to teach you like different things that you can do at home that will help you for a shoot. And or wigs, you guys. The wig game has come so far. <laughs> Wear a wig if you need to. All right. He also told me um, to have a wardrobe. Now they, nowadays, there's so many stylists readily available. He told me to have something for a commercial. You want to make sure you have a pop of color. So, you know, you stand out on your images or it's just like really popping out. Um, you guys can see from the test that I did with Model Logic how I'm wearing like bright colors, things I wouldn't normally wear on my own, but like still <sighs> then he also told me to look at guess all american editorial h m um campaigns and like try to like emulate that because my market was going to be commercial athletic etc but i will tell you i ended up working with chris chris was such an influence on my career you guys when i shot with chris i shot this image um i don't have all the images but here are a few and from there like you guys when i was on set where i was at i was at kiss studios in atlanta they're still around They've changed their marketing to more Atlanta style. You guys know what that. Actually, you probably won't if you're watching this video. Atlanta style is more boudoir type, big booty, video vixen type modeling. Not so much anymore, but still so much right now. Okay. Um, I was at Kiss Studios. Estella Magazine had asked Kiss to help find them models. I so happened to be shooting at the studio with Chris. Chris said, hey, I got this model on set right now. Showed, what's her name, Summer? Showed Summer my image from there. Boom, I was booked. Look at God. Look at networking. So you guys, it's important to shoot. Which photographers you shoot with is important. You're not just paying for their services. You're paying for their experience. You're paying for their equipment. You're paying for their, their editing skills, their eye, their touch. I want to say, je me suis to say quoi, but I don't know that French word, so I ain't even play it. Um, you're paying. You're getting so much out of that. So already right there, like this is about to be a two-part video because y'all don't watch my videos if it's too long. 